Here is I'm inside the binary search tree class inside our chapter 17 class notes folder. And let's take a look at what we've got here so far. Some of what we're going to write today is going to be really familiar. Um, some not so much. Um, but we'll we'll kind of compare and contrast as we go. So a binary search tree, just like a binary tree, has only one instance variable, which is the root of the tree. It's of type node. That's the same. Let's scroll down to the bottom and look at the node class. The node class is going to be very similar. Um, so how is a node different in a binary search tree than in a regular binary tree? Well, in our binary tree, the data of a node was just of type object. Here, we need to compare the data. Um, so we need to make this of type comparable. So comparable is that interface um, where if you implement it, you promise to implement the compare to method, which is what we need. So this can be a binary search tree of any class of object as long as that class implements the comparable interface. We're going to get warnings in our code as we write this because I already had this set up not to use generics. I know you all said like, we should just use generics. But all the code you already have doesn't have the generics in it. So I didn't want to take a bunch of class time to change it. So we're going to have some warnings telling us, hey, you should really use generics. And job is right, we should. Next year, we'll use generics. So, all right. Um, the rest of the node class is the same. We're going to have a reference to the left child and a reference to the right child. So the only thing different in the node class for a binary search tree versus our binary tree is that the data is of type comparable. So we know we can call the compare to method. We'll come back to this add node thing later. All right, so let's zip back up to the top. We'll look at the constructor. This constructs an empty tree. Oh, we did that with the, the binary tree. We just set the root to null. Not too bad. We're gonna skip over add for now. We're gonna come back to that. Let's focus on the find first, which basically returns true if the specified object, the specified element is in the tree and false if it's not in the tree. Okay, so this is like the contains method of a, of a set. Much like the approach we took when we're iterating through a list or we're traversing a tree like we are in this case, we need to set up some sort of local variable that we can keep changing as we iterate, traverse, whatnot. So let's create a variable called current of type node. We'll initialize it to the root. So we're starting at the root of the tree. And what we're going to do is we're just going to look at the node, or really the data from the node, and do the compare to and decide, hey, did we find it? Are they equal? If so, we're done. If not, if it's less than what the node is, we'll go left. If it's greater than, we'll go right. And we'll just keep going till either we find it or until eventually we run out of nodes to look at. So we'll say while current is not equal to null. This also conveniently covers the case of what if our tree is empty. If our tree is empty, um, then current is null and we'll just return false and that's fine. The node is not in the empty tree. All right, so let's calculate, I'm gonna use this variable diff, like the difference between the element that is specified compared to the current node's data. There we go, equal sign. Three possible outcomes here. 
if diff equals zero, we're done. We found what we're looking for, return true. This binary search tree or this tree set contains the specified element. Else, if diff is less than zero, if the object specified as a parameter is less than the current node's data, we need to go left. So we'll say current equals current dot left. Now current dot left may be null, but that's fine. When we get back to the top of our while loop, we'll just, the loop will stop and we'll return false. Else, oops. Uh, diff must be greater than zero, which means we have to go right. Current equals current dot right. And that's all it really takes to search through a binary search tree looking for a specific element. Not too bad. And in fact, this general algorithm of, of doing the comparisons and then going left or right, we're going to do that over and over today as we go through these different methods. But this is the one we're starting with. Questions about the find method? Let's look at the next picture then. What if we want to insert a node into a binary search tree? In a way, we start off the same way as we do when we're trying to find a node in the binary search tree. We're going to start, let's say we want to insert Romeo. Romeo's not yet in the tree. We start at the root, the root and we say, is Romeo um, less than or greater than Juliet? Romeo is greater than Juliet, so we're going to go right. Is Romeo less than or greater than Tom? Romeo is less than Tom, so we're going to go left. But if Tom has no left child, perfect. We'll put Romeo right there. Romeo will be the new left child of Tom. So we basically search through the tree until we find that the way we want to go has no child. It's null. And that's where we put the node to be inserted. So let's try that out. So I'm going to scroll up a little bit to add. I didn't put these in quite the right order. Before we even get started, we need to actually create a new node that will reference the data that's specified um, by the object parameter. So just like we did in our, our previous tree, we'll create a new node. Assign that to the local variable new node. We'll initialize new node's data to the object referenced by the parameter. Just to be explicit, we'll set left to null. And we'll set right to null. And now we're ready to, to find out where to put this thing. We do have to continually, as we write this class, worry about the special case of what if the tree is empty, okay? So if this dot root equals null, that means the tree is empty. Well, it's really easy to add this object because it's the new root. This dot root equals new node. We are done. Otherwise, the tree isn't empty. We actually have to find where to put this new node. We could do this iteratively in a similar way as we wrote in the find method just a moment ago. Um, but I want to take this opportunity to show you that we can also do this recursively because um, that's definitely been a theme of this, this chapter. Um, so let's do this recursively and let's demote the responsibility for figuring out where to put this node to the node class itself, okay? So we could do it recursively in the binary search tree, like with a recursive helper method, 
but let's actually do it recursively in the node class. So I'm going to basically say, hey, root, this dot root, you figure out where to add the node. Here's the new node. To be clear, we don't have to do it this way. We could totally write the code right here in the else block. I just want to show you a variety of different approaches. All right, let's scroll all the way down to the bottom again. And I already have the documentation and the method header here for that add node method that we're gonna, we're gonna write. This code is gonna be pretty similar to what we wrote in find. We're gonna create a local variable called diff. And we're gonna say new node.data. So we gotta look at the, the actual element. Compare that to the data of this node. Okay. The behavior we're gonna have here for the add is like that of the set when you add to a set. If the element's already in the set, we're just gonna do nothing. No error, no nothing. We're just gonna do, it's just gonna work. So we're just gonna check if, so if diff is zero, we're not gonna do anything. But if diff is less than zero, then we know that the new node needs to be inserted somewhere in the left subtree. Okay, we're going left. Two potential cases here. The node we're currently at, maybe it doesn't have a left child. So if left is equal to null, well, the new node is the new left child. Left equals new node. We are done. Piece of cake. Otherwise, this node does have a left child, and the new node needs to go somewhere in that left subtree. So again, recursively, we defer this to the left child and we say, hey, left child node, you figure out where to add this new node. And it will do so. Else if diff is greater than zero, we're going right. Same two cases. What if there's no right child? Perfect, no right child. Now we have a right child. The new node is the new right child. Set right equal to new node. Otherwise, else, defer to the right node to figure out where to add the new node. And that's what it takes. to insert a node into a binary search tree. So from like implementing a tree set perspective, we've already implemented contains, we've already implemented add, all that's really left is a remove. But before we look at remove, questions about adding a node to a binary search tree, or really adding an element to a binary search tree. Yeah. Ah, good question. So the behavior we're going for here is that of like a set. So if you add an element and that element's already in the set, it just doesn't do anything. Not an error, not a duplicate, just nothing. So if diff equals zero here, we just return, we don't do anything. Um, other questions on the add? Remove is a bit more complicated. We're gonna handle three separate cases of removal. We're gonna start with the easiest and work our way up to the most challenging. In all of these cases, we still have to actually find the node that we wanna remove, okay? 
that part of the algorithm is going to be similar to the one we just wrote, right? We're doing a lot of this find the thing in the tree. Here's the easiest case. If we find the node to be removed and that node has no children, then we simply can take that node's parent and set either the left or right, whichever one is appropriate, to null. And the, the node is gone, okay? This is the easiest case. So let's code this case first. So we're removing the node and that node has no children. So we'll scroll back up to the top. We're not quite the top. We'll find the remove method. Again, we're, we're modeling this behavior of like the set. So if the specified object is not contained in a tree, um, that's fine. We're just going to do nothing. Okay? We're not going to throw an error or anything like that. All right, we have several things to keep track of. We need a local variable that will refer to the node to be removed. So I'm going to call the variable to be removed. And we'll initialize it to the root. We'll start there. So one variable references this node. In order to set the parent's left or right child to null, we also need a reference to the parent. So we'll have a local variable for that. Node parent, Let's equal, we'll initialize it to null because the root node has no parent. So that's a good initial value for parent. And we need to keep track of like, did we actually find this thing or not? So we'll say Boolean found equals false because we're going to search for it. And if we don't find it, that's fine. It's not an error, but we're just going to return immediately. All right, so the first chunk of code we have to write is let's find the node to be removed. And while doing so, let's make sure we keep track of that node's parent. So while not found and to be removed is not equal to null. So we're gonna keep searching as long as we haven't found what we're looking for and the node to be removed, fix that. There we go. It's not equal to null. To be removed will be set equal to null if we make it all the way like we're traversing the tree and we never find it. And eventually we, the, the left or the right direction we're going has no child. So that's when this will end. All right, we got to calculate the difference just like we've done before. We're going to take the object that's specified as a parameter, compare it to the current node we're looking at, the to be removed, that data. If diff is equal to zero, we found it. Excellent, set found to true. That means the while loop will end and we can move on with the actual removal part. Otherwise, we haven't found it yet. So we need to go either left or right based on whether if diff is less than zero or greater than zero. However, before we do, we need to make sure we keep parent updated. So we're about to change what to be removed refers to. So before we do that, because it's going to be either the left or the right, we're going to set parent equal to to be removed. And then we will immediately change to be removed if diff is less than zero, to be removed equals to be removed dot left. We go left. Otherwise, we go right. So as this runs, when we're done, either we don't find it, or if we do find it, to be removed refers to the node we want to remove, and parent refers to that node's parent. So we're in good shape to go on from here. But let's handle the case like we were asked to remove something that's not in the tree. So if not found, 
We're just going to return. We're done. I guess that's the easiest case. It's not in the tree. All right, we're going to write code for case one. Let's glance at the picture again here. Case one says the node to be removed has no left child and has no right child. So let's capture that. So what's case one? Case one is if to be removed dot left equals null and to be removed dot right equals null. That's case one. We always have to handle this boundary case of what if the node to be removed is the root? What if there is no parent, All right? So let's handle that first. If parent equals null, if the node to be removed is the only node in the tree, because we're in case one, we know there's no left child, we know there's no right child. Quite simply then, we can just say this dot root equals null. The tree is now empty, done. Else, two different options here. The node to be removed is either its parent's left child or its parent's right child. We got to figure out which, which one. So if, else if, parent.left equals to be removed, meaning the node to be removed is its parent's left child, well, we're going to set its parent's left child to null. Otherwise, it must be the parent's right child. So we'll set parent.right to null. Nice. That's what it takes to get rid of the node that has no left child or no right child. All right, what's case two? Well, case two focuses on what if the node to be removed does have a child, right? It complicates things. Here's a picture of case two. Case two says, what if the node to be removed has exactly one child? Not two, just one child. Well, if we were just to get rid of this node by setting parent.right to null, we would lose the left child here. Okay, it'd be like orphaned. We don't want that. So this works out okay because everything in the right subtree of parent is greater than parent because it's in the right subtree. So the, right, the immediate right child of parent doesn't have to be this node to be removed. This would be equally valid. That'd be a fine node to put there. So we'll have the parent's right child refer to this node instead of this one, and then this one is gone, okay? This isn't too bad. We just have to keep track of not only the node to be removed, but its parent, and then also figure out which of the node to be removed's children gets linked up, okay? So let's write a little bit of code for that. We'll call this case two. Well, that's what the book calls it. So we'll stick with the book, case two. All right, so case two says if or else if to be removed dot left equals null or to be removed dot right equals null. Either it has no left child or it has no right child, either way. But there is a child, and so we need to figure out the reference to that. So let's create another local variable called new child, meaning it's the new child of the parent. 
and figure out if it's the left or right child of the node to be removed. So if to be removed dot left equals null, so if the node to be removed has no left child, then new child is going to be set to node to be removed dot right. Otherwise, the node to be removed must not have a right child. So the new child will be set equal to node to be removed dot left. Cool, we figured out the new child of the parent. All right, next step. What if there is no parent? Okay. If parent equals null, it's not that we're left with an empty tree because we still have this child. It's that that child is now the root. This dot root equals new child. Congratulations. All right, that's our boundary case. Otherwise, we need to figure out, looking back at our graphic quickly, is the node to be removed the right child of the parent such that the parent's new right child is new node or new child? Or is the node to be removed the left child of the parent, in which case the parent's left node is now gonna be new child? So we gotta figure out which way it is. Else if, if parent.left equals to be removed, all right, we're gonna change parent.left to reference new child. Otherwise, the, two, the node to be removed must be the right child of the parent. So we'll say parent.right equals new child. And then we're gonna return, like we made it this far. We are done. <laughs> so that's what it takes for case two. Here's an interesting thing. And I don't expect you to see this necessarily right now, but if you were to look back over this code later and you're checking this monstrous method we're writing called remove, and you look at case one and you look at case two, when we're writing these methods, when we're figuring out these algorithms, we wanna handle it very methodically, case by case, make sure we always got the boundary conditions covered. But then when we're done, we wanna go back and look at it and look for similarities and patterns that might allow us to make this a little bit more concise without losing its clarity. And in this case, there's a lot similar between case one and case two, okay? Um, so something we might consider is, is it feasible to merge these in some way? Like what if in case two, what if left was null and right was null? How would this code behave if both to be removed left and right were null? Well, let's just trace through it and see what happens. So if both were null, to be removed dot left equals null, yep, that'd be true. New node equals to be removed dot right, which would also be null. We would just set new child to null. All right, that might be problematic if we try to reference any of its instance variables, but let's go along. If parent equals null, this dot root equals new child, we would have just set the root to null. Hey, that's just like what we did up here. That seems okay. Else, if parent dot left equals to be removed, parent dot left would equal null. Hey, that's exactly the same code that we wrote up here. And the else is exactly the same as well. So really case two, not only covers case two, it really is the code for case one and case two. And so I know this seems wasteful, but this is really how you develop these algorithms and how you code it. 
you do each case, you do it methodically, you go back and look for opportunities later. And if you can delete like 12 lines of code, that's a great thing. We can get rid of case one and have case two just start with, or case one and two now start with if instead of else if. Cool. We are gonna pause right here.